Our first stop was Shannon, Ireland, home of Bunratty Castle. The Shannon River has been an important strategic point for centuries, so Bunratty Castle's fortifications have been tested many times. Spiral staircases usually turn counterclockwise, so that attackers going up would find their right arms, their sword arms, restricted, and defenders going down would have their right arms free. But the Lord of Bunratty must have been left-handed, because these stairs go the other way. The fire extinguisher is not original to the castle. Bunratty's defenses included cannons, in use in Europe since the 13th century. The Shannon Historical Park at Bunratty Castle shows firsthand the history of Irish life. These are traditional traveler wagons. Travelers were once called Irish gypsies, or sometimes tinkers, but they consider these terms to be racist now. While today they typically travel in pickups and travel trailers, they still keep their nomadic traditions alive. While this cottage looks cute on the outside, it was smoky and dark inside, like most other Irish homes prior to the mid-20th century. Burning peat for fuel creates a lot of smoke, and greatly contributed to ill health and early death. It really didn't matter if an Irishman smoked tobacco. If he lived in a peat-fired home, he was going to suffer just the same. Throughout Ireland, you see mazes of stone walls. These walls serve two purposes, to keep livestock and pesky kids in their place, and as a place to put all the stones in the field. After all, you can't plant crops in a field full of rocks. Livestock of various kinds have long been important in Irish agriculture. Horses, for example. Cattle were so important that in ancient and medieval Ireland, wealth was measured by the size of one's herd. And then come the sheep. Sheep have been vital to the Irish economy for literally thousands of years. Even today, sheep rule the roads in rural Ireland. The paint markings show which ewes have mated with which rams. Sheep exhaust is eco-friendly, but messy, so watch where you step. Next we traveled to Inish Moor, one of the Aran Islands. For such a remote island, they sure have quite a setup for tourists. Dunangus named for the god Angus. On Inish Moor is one of the earliest surviving fortifications in Ireland, predating even the Iron Age Celts, known as the Irish. The fortress stands at the highest point on the island, and it's quite a climb to reach it. But they made a road for the tourists, and you can rent bicycles or take a horse and buggy ride most of the way up. You've got to walk the last stretch yourself, though. I'd heard Irish houses were small, but wow, I feel like Godzilla. The walls of Dunangus form a semicircle, with the cliffs at their back. In the event of an invasion, the island's residents retreated to the fortress. If the walls were breached, the defenders would jump 100 meters to their deaths in the water below, rather than surrender. Anyone fancy a dive? <laughs> 